My name is Kevin Lipson, and on behalf of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum and its Committee on Conscience, the Aspen Institute Justice and Society Program, and the United States Institute of Peace, I'm pleased to welcome you all here this evening. As a member of the museum's Lawyers Committee, I've had the pleasure to be associated with this institution for quite a long time. Like you, I am moved by the force of will of the survivors and the compelling nature of their stories. And I am struck by the museum's many partnerships and educational programs that allow it to reach a wide and diverse audience. But perhaps most impressive is the extraordinary relevance that this one horrific historical event has for so many people who seemingly have no personal connection to it. In fact, with the millions of people that the museum reaches every year, there really is no limit to the issues that we deal with today that can and should be informed by a Holocaust history. It is a history that provides us with a unique window to human nature, both the good and the bad. But it also provides a compelling platform for each of us in our respective professional capacities to better understand the nature of our profession and the nature of our individual responsibility as a member of that profession and as a member of civilized society. This is especially true for the legal profession, one that many of us here tonight share. After all, it is a fact of history that the Holocaust occurred through the rule of law, not in spite of law. And similarly, any measure of justice or accountability as it relates to the Holocaust or any other genocide will undoubtedly largely be realized through law. Elie Wiesel said that a memorial unresponsive to the future would violate the memory of the past. This museum embodies the commitment that Holocaust memory will stand in perpetuity to inspire humanity to effect a better future. That is a commitment we all must share. This evening's program will be extraordinary. We have an incredibly distinguished panel. And to introduce that panel, I'm very pleased to introduce Merrill Chertoff, director of the Aspen Institute's Justice and Society program. Merrill. Thank you so much for that very kind introduction. I want to thank Michael Abramowitz of the Committee on Conscience and the leadership of the museum for organizing this evening. And on behalf of Walter Isaacson and the Aspen Institute, I want to say how glad we are to be partnering with the museum and the Institute of Peace on this important event. But partnering on this particular subject comes to us naturally. I'm proud to say that Harold Coe, one of this evening's panelists, was a regular moderator at the Seminar for Judges run for many years at Aspen's Y River facility by our Emerita Director, Alice Henkin, along with her late husband, Professor Lewis Henkin of Columbia Law School, two key developers and proponents of the modern field of human rights and humanitarian law. Some of the Justice and Society Program's recent efforts are focused on development of the rule of law around the world, including in the Arabian Gulf and the Arab Spring countries, and in countries of the former Eastern Bloc, and I want to observe that it is through the rule of law, through vigorous legal and judicial institutions, that we are able to prevent the perpetration of the most grievous offenses committed by the unbridled exercise of power by the political branches against discreet and insular minorities. Tonight, we'll hear about the role of courts like those at Nuremberg, and more recently, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and the International Tribunal for Rwanda in administering a rough approximation of retributive justice, testimony, and reconciliation in nations where the rule of law has grievously failed. I want to salute the Museum's Committee on Conscience for its work on genocide prevention around the world, a worthy aspect of this museum's mission to educate and to remember. And now I want to turn it over to Michael Bromwitz. Thank you, Merrill, for that kind introduction. What Merrill did not say, which I want everyone to know, is that Michael Chertoff 
her husband is also the chairman of the Committee on Conscience, and we really enjoy working with the Cheridoffs in general. So thank you, Meryl. Um, as she said, I am the director of the Genocide Prevention Program at the museum, which has really been an integral part of the museum's mission since we opened our doors 20 years ago. If you go upstairs and after you go through our permanent exhibition on the Holocaust, you'll come to our interactive installation from memory to action, which focuses on the genocides at Rwanda, at Srebrenica, and also in Darfur. And we really are working on a lot of different levels and in a lot of different ways to really focus public and policymaker attention on the ongoing problem of genocide in our time. I would like to thank our partners this evening. First of all, our new partners, the Aspen Institute. And we're also joined this evening by the US Institute of Peace, which is really a very close and trusted partner for the museum. Uh, one current initiative that we are working on with the USIP, which I'd like to highlight, is our uh, joint working group on the responsibility to protect, which is co-chaired by Secretary Madeleine Albright and Ambassador Rich Williamson. And it's a bipartisan group. And as some of you know, the responsibility to protect is an important new international norm that's really aimed at uh, making clear that all nations share a responsibility to protect our citizens from genocide, from war crimes, from crimes against humanity. And uh, we expect our co-chairs to issue a report later this year about how to strengthen this norm and improve our capacity to prevent these crimes from happening. Our subject tonight is a big one, and one that I do believe uh, relates to the issue of prevention. Because if one cannot, if we can't deliver justice and accountability for the truly evil, how can we ever hope to deter would-be perpetrators in the future? Yet, this is a problem that has vexed democracies and other nations since the Nuremberg Military Tribunal opened its proceedings in late 1945 against 22 leading Nazis for war crimes, war crimes against humanity, and the waging of aggressive war. As William Shawcross, to my left, writes in the first chapter of his book, the judgment of evil is never simple. And this is a problem that is very much with us today, whether we are talking about the how to bring justice to the for the architects of the killing fields in Cambodia, how to arrest the president of Sudan who has been accused of genocide in Darfur, or how we properly try Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and the other members of Al-Qaeda who have murdered thousands over the years and aspire to the destruction of Western society. And so we are surely fortunate this evening to have a great team of all-stars to discuss and debate these issues, and I suspect disagree a little bit. So David Sheffer has been intimately involved in these issues over many years, first as a senior official in the US delegation to the United Nations, and then as the first war crimes ambassador for the United States, working for then Secretary of State Albright. In his new book, All the Missing Souls, David gives a real insider's account of the creation of the first international tribunals since Nuremberg, set up to try, to, to try the perpetrators of the wave of killings that took place in the 1990s. And I should also say that David is a very good friend of the museum, and we have worked with him over the years on many projects, and most recently on a project that we're going to do on the Cambodia War Crime Tribunal. I should also say David has recently been appointed. He has a new job that many of you might not know about. He is a special expert for the United Nations on the Khmer Rouge trials. So he's in the middle now of the controversies over how to handle that important set of cases. William Shawcross uh, has addressed these issues from a different perspective as really one of the leading journalists of his generation and who first made his mark actually chronicling the terrible events in Cambodia. But in Justice and the Enemy, William tackles a different issue, which is how we're going to deliver justice to the new breed of stateless Islamic terrorists that have challenged the West over the past decade and a problem that has now vexed two American presidents and has brought about, just as at Nuremberg, a new judicial body within the military to try suspects. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to ask uh, William and David to talk about their recent books, uh, which address these issues from slightly different frameworks. And then I'm going to turn to Harold Coe, who is one of the great legal figures of this generation. Harold worked during the Clinton administration as the assistant Secretary of State for Human Rights, Democracy, and Labor. Did I get that in the right order? Yes, I know. <laughs> and uh, then he became the Dean of Yale Law School, and he has returned to government service as a legal advisor at the State Department, where he routinely deals with such non-controversial subjects as drone strikes, the legality of killing Osama bin Laden, 
and our cooperation with the International Criminal Court. So I will ask Harold to react a bit to the points